Visa and MasterCard, you run your transaction, transaction goes to Visa, Visa verifies whether you have the money and authorizes the transaction. With Bitcoin mining, everybody has the opportunity to be Visa or MasterCard every single block. You need to solve a puzzle, and the more hash power and the more servers you have, the faster you can solve that puzzle and they get the right to be Visa or MasterCard and mine that block. And it's a decentralized way of doing that. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. We're here at Futurist Day Number One. I'm here with Scott uh, Johnson of Digital Shovel. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself in sort of 30 seconds and then we'll dig into it. Uh, so I'm the CEO and lead designer of Digital Shovel. We make infrastructure for mining Bitcoin uh, out of ventilation, electrical, and housing. We basically build the holes for the Bitcoin miners. Interesting. And yeah, so what, what you said to me earlier is you manufacture quite a few things, but not the miners. Everything but the miners. Uh, we, let the, we let the guys get. It is a very tall order to make a Bitcoin miner. I believe in focusing on what you do and what you're good at. Yeah. We're good at building the infrastructure, and that, that's what I started doing, and that's what we're focused on doing. Okay. So for people who don't understand, what infrastructure is required to be mining Bitcoin other than the miners themselves? So when you run a Bitcoin miner, it consumes a whole pile of power and converts all that power to heat. So you need to distribute that power and you need to do something with the heat and to ventilate the heat. Okay. Um, the other thing we need to do is create smart, smart automation to make your miners as efficient as possible and operate as optimally as possible. Right. And we build that smart automation, smart automation as well uh, through automated, basically like the electrical panel that you have in your house. So imagine that on crack, a design, because the power density in one of these units, we've got one outside uh, that's running with some miners in it. Uh, the power density of that is about the same as this entire building put together in just one little five foot by five foot square. That's incredible. So maybe in 30 seconds, I could put you on the spot. Like what, what is Bitcoin mining fundamentally? Like, I mean, and how does it sort of integrate into existing grids and into our, let's say our economy even like what, what, why do we need it? I think is a question that many people have. Uh, 30 seconds. Uh, I'll give you what's give you Bitcoin mining really simple. Visa and MasterCard, you run your transaction, you run it through, transaction goes to Visa, Visa verifies whether you have the money and authorizes the transaction. With Bitcoin mining, everybody has the opportunity to be Visa or MasterCard every single block. You need to solve a puzzle, and the more hash power and the more servers you have, the faster you can solve that puzzle, and they get the right to be Visa or MasterCard and mine that block. And it's a decentralized way of doing that. Um, why do we need Bitcoin? That is not a 30-second answer. <laughs> um that, I mean, a really simple example. Let's go back to Cyprus in 2009 when the Cyprian government asked for a bailout and Cypri and ECB gave all these measures. They said no and said they simply took money out of everybody's bank account. Same thing happened to you. Since COVID happened, but 25% of all dollars didn't exist, that's the same as taking money. Like printing money and giving out free money to everybody is the same as taking money away from those that have money. That does not happen with Bitcoin and that is why we need Bitcoin. One of many reasons, but that's my... 30 second answer for you. That's fantastic. So it seems to me like Bitcoin mining has evolved from being something that people would do in their basement or their garage. Uh, you know, anybody could basically mine Bitcoin and, and make, I guess, a decent amount of money if you put in the effort. Whereas today it seems to be much more consolidated. And we're talking about, you know, large caps like you know, Merit Mod or, or perhaps here in Canada, HUD 8. Um, or are your clients? Who is the industry? Most of our clients are medium to really large bitcoin miners there's still there's still there still are a medium-sized miner still spending three four hundred thousand dollars so and, but that actually sounds it, it, approachable yeah it's very approachable you there still are opportunities to come in and run 10 to 20 miners i mean if you're in newfoundland labrador power rates are extremely cheap and you can still get in there and still make a decent profit i mean getting into mining is a lot like buying bitcoin you need to buy it when everybody thinks that it's in the shitter and sorry, I don't know if we could swear here but when, when, when everybody thinks the market's in the shitter and they're like oh that Bitcoin thing and that Bitcoin mining is not working no these are the times to get in not when works hitting new all-time highs but everybody wants to get in because that's the hype and the fun time and it seems cool and everything looks good on your spreadsheet you want to buy your Bitcoin mining equipment when it's cheap you want to get in when nobody else is trying to steal not steal but take all of the cheap power opportunities and you need to have the same uh forward way of thinking just like if you're going to buy bitcoin and and some people choose to go to buy the buying bitcoin routes some people try to go to mining what sort of, uh, i guess facilities what sort of infrastructure do you have 
to manufacture. I think you're, you're based in Toronto? Yeah, so we're based in Toronto. We've got a 80,000 square foot facility. We do everything in-house. The only thing we don't do is we, make, we don't make the circuit breakers and we don't make the motors for the fans. We have a full sheet metal shop. We have a PCB assembly line. We make all of our electrical panels. We also write all of the software for doing the smart automations of our data centers in-house, which allows our clients not only just to um, we'll drive and create a more efficient data center, but it also allows them to participate in curtailment programs where you can use your Bitcoin mining farm to help the electrical grid, which is a really, really cool aspect of the industry, which I, I, I think it needs more praise and needs a larger audience to hear that message. Well, there we go. Um, well, do you want to expand it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's this narrative that Bitcoin mining is bad for the grid and these Bitcoin miners are coming in and just gobbling up all the power. And the reality is, in few instances, that might be true, but the majority, it's not. Bitcoin miners want to get the cheap power. So most of our power prices, you know, it starts low, goes really high during a peak when you're nearing a blackout or when it's really, really hot during the summer and drops off. But your power price is this little gap up here. The rest of the time is idle capacity. Bitcoin miners are happy to take the rest of it and turn off for that little bit. What that does is if you've got a green energy product like a wind turbine or solar or something that is reliant only on that top peak for generating its revenue, we're now generating revenue the rest of the time on a stable basis, which makes these projects more economically viable. It makes it easier to get financing for the project, and it makes it easier to build more green energy projects than would have other been otherwise been possible with the current demand on the electrical grid. Why don't we talk about all this? See, I mean, it's when you say. I, I mean, I'm ringing the bell. There's lots of other people. If you go to the Bitcoin mining conferences, um, lots of other people have been talking about this. The ERCOT, the, the energy grid in Texas, actually pays Bitcoin miners to turn off. So it's not just they turn off and they save the power. They actually get an extra feed back from the grid because the grid realizes it's cheaper to do this than for me to go build another power plant. Why don't I have this guy who's a 200 megawatt consumer and he will turn off instantly, and I now have 200 megawatts more of capacity when everybody has their ACs on and we're at 115 degrees Fahrenheit on a hot summer day. That is way cheaper, and it's also better for the grid, better for the environment because those peaker plants that turn on, they burn natural gas and hydrocarbons, which are going to be bad for the ozone. And so it's it it's a win win for everybody, and that's something that um, you know, Minister. Um, Mr. Nelly from uh, the Alberta government is here today. Um, we were at a, we went on a trade mission with him to Texas to help educate and inform various layers of government and understand. Look, Bitcoin mining can help you; it's a benefit to you, and can make all of uh, your energy production a lot more economically viable and actually lower prices for consumers rather than increase it. Which unfortunately is a narrative that's pushed in a lot of uneducated forms of media that don't understand how everything works. How many people? Uh, we have 65 full-time employees in-house in Toronto. Right. So you have a pretty good sense of the, uh, I guess, the labor uh, friends or opportunities perhaps uh, for uh, maybe the younger generation, folks that are watching us that are, you know, let's say at least curious, perhaps have been passionate about Bitcoin already, but haven't maybe considered that this could actually be a career for them. Where are the jobs in, in, in the Bitcoin or Bitcoin mining world? <laughs> I mean, there's a variety. I mean, we're, we're a little bit more niche because we're on the manufacturing side uh, and the majority for us is coming on the engineering side mechanical engineers um process uh our software full stacks lot i mean the full stack side especially it is huge just in terms of software design and then we also have like our conventional guys that are on the floor that are managing doing the operations we all of our welding is fully robotic at our facility um, so robotics technicians guys that know how to program that stuff and then your conventional, you know, red seal sheet metal guys as well. I mean, we 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 run the whole gamut. And perhaps you could, I could ask you the same question for career entrepreneurship. Like, where are the business opportunities within the Bitcoin space? Perhaps you could draw on to. Ask me. They give the secret sauce right now. Um, yes, I. Have- you, you know what? Like, do the things that people don't want to do. Um, it, well, for me, I mean, people in this space, a lot of the tech heavy guys didn't want to get their hands dirty. They wanted to just sub it out to an engineering firm, let them do their thing, and you know, their product they're going to come out with is going to be three, four times the price of what we produce it for. Sometimes getting your hands dirty and understand how things work and building something that caters a little more to the space gives you a really big competitive advantage and lets us offer things that otherwise wouldn't have been possible if we were subbing that stuff out. Thank you very much.